So what's the most important attachment on your gun? A lot of people do ask me that, and before we get into that, let's get into what's happening here at Siege. Now, we have a bit of a content drought lately, and it's not because I don't like you guys. It's because we're moving into the fall, winter, and early spring season. We are working on a lot of stuff at Siege, including something we call Siege Season 2. Stay tuned for that. I can't talk about it just yet, but expect a lot of interesting things. We're going to keep you guys updated via our YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, our social media, as well as our website. Now let's get into the topic of the video. And the most important attachment is, as you guessed it, going to be your sling. So why your sling and not red dot or flashlight or stuff like that? And the biggest reason is, is for a lot of people, this rifle or whatever primary you're using is going to be the most important investment and the biggest investment you're going to put into your sport. And your sling is basically a form of insurance for that. Uh, if for some reason you take a tumble or a fall, you might break your bones, but at least your rifle should be okay. And for us airsofters, that's a lot more important than bones. Uh, bones grow back, rifles don't, I guess. So for those reasons, slings are super important. Now, on the more serious note, slings are important because airsoft is more than just shooting. It's primarily shooting, but at Siege and at other games, there's a lot of objectives. You might need to plant a bomb, drag a body, move someone, heal someone, medic them up, take flags, take points, objectives, whatever you need to grab. And having something to drop to allows the rifle to get out of your body and it to be retained. I've also noticed that because we're an awesome community here, people like to help each other out. And sometimes you're gonna need to put your rifle down for that. Now I can help someone out here right now because I got two of my hands free, but some people put the rifle on the ground. And I have seen, especially at Siege, where the ground is solid kryptonite, where somebody bumps into that wall, uh, God forbid, uh, not really at our facilities, but somebody takes it, runs with it, of course, uh, or somebody just kicks it by accident and it falls on the ground. It's damaged, it's lost, it's stolen, whatever, and that could all have been prevented with a simple strap. Now, if you watch my previous video, we know over one point slings, two point slings, lots of different kinds of slings, and also how do you set up your rifle. So why do I like two point slings over ones? So for one point slings, they tend to ride on the area of your gun around your buffer tube or around where the stock is, and they hang around like this, especially for a heavy gun like this, when I'm running around, it kind of hits me in the junk, that's not super pleasant, even if I were to switch it on the side, I feel like a giant grandfather clock with it swinging around like that. Another thing that one point slings aren't very good at is distributing the load. If I'm holding this heavy AK up, slings aren't just something to carry the gun to me, they're kind of like a third arm, we're gonna get into that in a bit, and they can help you distribute the load across your body. So what kind of slings do you wanna buy? There's lots of different kinds out there from your favorite companies such as Faro, Spiritus, Haley, a bunch of airsoft style slings out there, Magpul, you name it. Now for a two point sling, what I like to look for is something with good webbing, nice and flexible. Uh, I know some people like to run the BFG sling. I personally find that webbing a little bit too thick for me, uh, but I'm also a, a skinny boy, so that might be it. But something with good flexible one inch webbing, a nice pad, and a good quick adjuster. If you have all those three things, you're good to go. In terms of attachment points, I either hard point the sling to the gun or hard loop it like this so it doesn't really roll around. Or something like a clip, this is a uh, BFG cable clip or something like that, or an HK clip like I used to my AR. Now I don't really take the slings off the gun uh, because there's no really reason for me to. Um, you can stow them perfectly fine without it, um, so I just kind of do it like that. The reason I don't like QDs so much is because airsoft QDs, especially clone ones, are pretty cheap. Uh, if the gun bumps into you, especially if they have super big buttons, I've seen them bump into people, the QD disengages and the gun falls off, making the sling effectively useless. Uh, cheaper QDs can also be off spec. Sometimes the QD cups themselves are off spec. Sometimes the QD itself is off spec. If you go real steel, real steel, you should be okay. You should be fine there. But if you're going airsoft clone stuff, I recommend going for a clone HK clip or something similar. It's much harder for a metal hook to fail than it is for ball bearings, detents, and like that, all that stuff and buttons to fail. Either way, I just like staking an old school for there. I like hooks, I like clips. I don't really like the QD clips that much. Uh, that's just me. If you use a QD clip for years with no issues, totally up to you. I know a lot of real guys use them with no issues. That's just me being a little bit of a boomer with my mentality on clips. Now, once you get your sling, where do you want to mount it? So when you get your two point sling, it's probably going to come set up for some super big six foot, one million person, uh, not set up for regular sized people like us. And the reason they come super long is because they can set up to be pretty much Gimli sized or a uh, Yorm the Giant sized. So depending on what you like, you can adjust that and you can cut it to your length, right? So what you need to set up your sling is pretty easy. I like to have scissors to cut it. I like to have a Sharpie to mark it. And I like to have a lighter to burn it. And we're gonna get into that in a bit. Tape is also useful too. If you don't wanna cut it, you can wrap the, uh, the webbing up. And this is especially useful if you need to set up the sling for things like winter kit or you need to add more sustainment layers over time. 
Now for mounting this sling, I like to mount it, I'm going to kind of unloop myself here, one side over here where the handguard kind of terminates with the body of the gun. That way, if I'm holding the gun like this, the sling doesn't get in the way. Now I know some people like to mount it here, but for airsoft, we're often holding the gun in our hands anyways, um, and I don't like the sling to be there, that's just personally me. And when you have the gun tension on your body, it doesn't really get in the way of things like reloads and all that stuff. But I don't like really mounting my sling here and here. Now I understand some people like to do that, and it's fast, but I find it kind of is a workaround around a one-point sling, um, because when you shoulder the gun, the sling kind of gets bunched up against your cheek, and also the stock kind of swings around because this is kind of uncontrolled, and there's no really gravity like the handguard helping it to carry it down. Uh, the stock's just kind of waving around a bit more. I don't really like that. So I put it in the back over here. So when it's in the back over here, it's really nice. Uh, and as you can see, like I said earlier, this side is running to the right, and this side is running to the left, assuming the front of the gun is pointing towards you. And the reason that is, is because you do need to transition hands a lot in airsoft. When you transition hands with the sling on this side, what you're gonna find is that it chokes you a lot, right? However, when it's like this, because the stock pad and the stock kind of acts as a buffer, although my neck is around the sling, I can still breathe just fine, my windpipe is unobstructed, and we're still good to go. And if I wanna go onside, even easier. This also keeps the gun nice and tight to your body, and it's a pretty good option. In terms of length, the first thing that you kinda of wanna look at is how the pad relates to your shoulder. Now some people run the pad all the way in the back, and that kind of negates the purpose of the pad. Just like a backpack or a chest rig, you want the pad to be on your shoulder, carrying the weight of the gun. So this part of the sling over here, you'll notice, on a lot of people that have it set up properly, is really short. That's fine, because the pad stays on me. That's exactly how it was designed. Now in terms of length, you want to make sure the adjuster is all the way out. Kind of like some of those low power variable optics, you really only use the optic all the way in eight times mode, or all the way in one times mode. I know there's like schools discussion on that, but pretty much you're going to be using the sling either all the way in or all the way out, right? If you have it all the way in and you adjust it and it's comfortable, when you pull it all the way out, it's going to be way too loose. You want it all the way out so you can tighten it up naturally, and then you have this length of which you can tighten it. Now the loosest position for your sling should be where when you have it shouldered regularly, there's a bit of slack, and you can transition, and it's tight. Another way to tell is if you let the sling around your neck and you let it lay down, it's just around your waist, your belly line. It's not right up here your chest, and it's not your knees. If it's at your knees, it's too loose. If it's up here, you can't really move with it. It's too tight. Once you get that kind of set, you can take your scissors, cut it down, or take your tape, tape it down, take a Sharpie, mark the edges. Uh, this was an old trick my, uh, one of my army friends told me, is uh, he just marked kind of where his kit was. That way, if he has to undo it for any reason, he knows where to adjust it to. And then you can take a lighter, and burn the frayed edges or anything like that off. Lighters are great to have for any form of nylon kit. They can burn frayed edges and they can really increase the life of all of your soft gear. So it's always good to check your edges and make sure that they're nice and tight. Now that your sling nicely adjusted, you can use it in a variety of conditions. Now how do I like to use my sling? This is an AK, it's a bit of a heavier gun. Uh, some of you guys wanted to see it on video. Here it is again. I still use this thing, of course, uh, and it's a bit heavier. Um, so when I have a sling on it, it's really good because it helps me carry the weight of the gun. In a game like Berlin Wall, having a quick adjust sling allows me to pull it tight like this, and now I have tension on the gun, I can let it rest in my hand, I can shake off some muscle fatigue here, shake off some fatigue here, and keep going and keep that gun held up, or keep it in a position like this where I can quickly snap it up and see the sight, no problem. Another thing you can do is, for a two-point sling, you can wrap it around like this, give yourself some quick tension, that's an old hunting trick, and that works really well too. If I need to swim out of my sling for whatever reason, put it on my back, tighten it up, it's good to go, it's nice and secure. You can even hook it around your pistol, and that keeps it nice and secure too. If I need to get out and use my gun again, I'll basically swim out of it, loosen the sling up, swim back into it, and it's good to go. Now for outdoor games, I rarely need to transition because you can just move from one side of the tree to the other, it's not that huge of a deal. But for indoor games, with a lot of varied cover, a lot of snaking around stuff, you will need to transition shoulders a lot. So, this is kind of hard to transition shoulders to, even though it's possible. What I do is I swim out, take my thumb, tighten it up, and now it's basically kind of like a one point. If I want to put it down, it still stays nice inside my body. I can pull my pistol out if I need to, I can get back on my rifle if I need to. And what's nice about this is if I need to transition, you totally can, and the sling doesn't really get in the way of anything. And if you want to go back in, 
loosen it up, swim back in, and you're back in. One thing you do want to practice is swimming in and out of your two-point sling. Before we get into the closer, something serious. Now, C21 is still trying to be passed by the current government, and we do have a lot of resources to help you out with that, including writing letters to your local MP. Flood them with letters, guys. It means a lot to me. It's not only my hobby, but it's also my job. Uh, but for you guys, it's your hobby too. And of course, we want places like this to stay open. We want to have great stuff coming in, and we want to continue our fun, safe, and awesome sport of airsoft. Thanks for watching this video on slings, everybody. It's a little bit of a quick one, especially in a new kind of studio space, which is our old studio space a bit repurposed. So we hope that you guys like the lighting in here. Um, and we're going to have a lot more content for you coming soon. Practice, guys. Stay safe out there. Remember to represent our sport properly. Everybody here is a member of a community. Um, be good to each other. All that good stuff. Nothing I really need to say here. And have a good one, everybody. We'll see you in the field soon, hopefully with a nicely adjusted two-point sling. Take it easy, everybody. I don't know why the ice cream truck comes into an industrial lot when there's literally no one here that eats ice cream on a uh, Wednesday afternoon uh, in Scarborough. And now I gotta wait for him to uh, drive past as he's uh, blasting child music. I don't know, maybe there's some greater meaning to it. I'd rather not think about it to be honest.